Why, hello, demigods, monsters, and gods alike. You found yourself here at the Olympus Report. Before the Percy Jackson Disney Plus adaptation series was announced, the graphic novels were some of the best visual representation we had of the stories. But how good were they? Well, we're going to take a look in my new series, Adaptation or Not to Adaptation. Up first, The Lightning Thief. The Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief graphic novel tells an almost perfect story. To dive a little deeper into it, we're going to break it up into four parts. What stayed the same, what changed, what they left out, and finally, art style. Up first, we have what stayed the same. We meet Percy at the museum. We meet Mr. Brunner and Grover. Mr. Brunner teaches about Kronos and just how important it is for Percy to know this stuff. They break for lunch. Nancy Boba Fett picks on them and ends up in the fountain somehow. Mrs. Dodds calls Percy over. She attacks him. Percy slices her into dust with a pen that Mr. Brunner loaned him. Everyone acts like she never existed. We go back to Yancey Academy. Percy is studying for his exams and goes to ask for help where we overhear Grover and Mr. Brunner talking about him. The school year ends and Percy misunderstands Mr. Brunner saying he doesn't belong. Percy and Grover encounter the three fates. Grover tries to accompany Percy home, but Percy ditches him. Percy goes home and Sally Jackson is the best and Gabe is the worst. Sally and Percy go to the beach. Sally talks a little bit about Percy's dad, but they are interrupted by Grover banging on the door in a thunderstorm saying they need to leave now. Grover is actually a satyr. They get chased to camp, but before they get there, their car explodes. They are attacked by the Minotaur. Grover is knocked out and Sally gets squeezed into light. Percy uses the Minotaur horn to kill the monster. He passes out and wakes up at camp. Percy learns about camp and the Greek gods. Mr. Brunner is really a centaur named Chiron. We meet Mr. D who is the director of the camp and the god Dionysus. And he's just a tiny bit cranky. We meet Annabeth Chase. We meet Clarice, where she tries to stick Percy's head in the toilet and ends up drenched herself. Percy gets a tour and ends up staying in the Hermes cabin, where we meet Luke Castellon. Percy spends some days at camp until capture the flag, where Annabeth uses him as a decoy for Clarice and wins the game. Percy is claimed by Poseidon. The Hellhound attacks. Other campers are scared of Percy and avoid him. We learn about the Big Three Pact and Thalia. Percy goes to the Oracle to get a prophecy. Zeus's lightning bolt has been stolen and Zeus blames Percy, so Percy has to get it back. Or an all-out war of the gods will break loose. They think Hades stole it, so they go west to Los Angeles. Annabeth and Grover accompany him. Luke gives him flying shoes, but he can't use them, so Percy gives them to Grover. Their boss is attacked. We find out Grover wants to get his searcher's license to look for the lost god of the wild, Pan. They meet a pink poodle, who allows them to return him to their owner so they can get the reward money. With the reward money, they buy a train ticket. Percy has some weird dreams about a voice in a pit. They stop in St. Louis and see the archway. Percy is attacked by Echidna and jumps out of the archway, ends up in the Mississippi. He obtains pearls that will help him escape the underworld. They meet Ares at a diner who gives them supplies and a ride further west. They end up in Las Vegas and get sidetracked at the Lotus Hotel and Casino until they eventually escape with only one day left of their deadline. They take a cab to LA. They get to DOE Recording Studios and have to bribe Charon to take them down to the underworld. They cross the river Styx and Grover almost gets dragged into Tartarus by the flying shoes, but manage to escape and go to Hades Palace. Hades doesn't have the bolt and in fact his Helm of Darkness is missing and Hades also blames Percy. Percy realizes the bolt is in the backpack from Ares and that they were duped. They use the pearls to escape, but Percy vows to come back for his mom. They confront Ares, but realize that someone else must be controlling Ares. 
Percy fights him and wins. He gets back the Helm of Darkness, which he returns to the Furies to return to Hades. Percy gets on an airplane back to New York and goes to the 600th floor of the Empire State Building where Mount Olympus is. He explains everything to Zeus and returns the bolt. Zeus decides not to kill him but refuses to listen about the voice in the pit, which they think is Kronos. Percy and Poseidon have a heart to heart. Percy returns to Camp a Hero and Sally is returned. Okay, now for what they changed. To be fair, they didn't change too much. The biggest changes I found were the order in which certain things happened. Like Annabeth being introduced just a little later on in the book, the order in which we learn about Thalia in the Big Three Pact, but the biggest change in order that I noticed is that Percy and Grover encounter the Three Fates before they get on the bus, and then Percy ditches him there instead of after the bus ride in New York. Okay, now for what they left out. The first act of the book is almost pretty perfect, except for a couple of things. We don't see Percy's first dinner, so we don't get to see them sacrificing food to the gods. Percy's training session with Luke was also left out, so we don't get to see him best Luke, which was also key into hinting at who Percy's father was. Much of Annabeth's background is also left out, as well as certain characters are missing, like the Stoll brothers. But it's once we hit the quest portion of the book that really important things start to get left out. The entire Medusa scene is gone, which is so important because this is where they get the address for the DOA recording studio. When Percy falls into the Mississippi from the archway, the Naiad just gives him the pearls there instead of telling him to go to Santa Monica Beach to get the pearls there, which is honestly kind of a smart decision because if you can combine two scenes into one, you should do it for the sake of time. However, this does mean that the Santa Monica scene is gone. Percy is never made out to be a fugitive, and Ares just gives them the supplies and ride. They don't have to go get his shield, and therefore they don't go to the water park. There's no animals in the truck, so we don't get a heart-to-heart -heart between Percy and Annabeth. That whole scene is just kind of skipped. Groovy Dan was left out of the Lotus Hotel, and Cerberus was left out of the Underworld. There was no Medusa, so Sally never turned Gabe to stone. And the biggest omission, in my opinion, comes at the end. Luke has just already disappeared at the end of the book, so there's no confrontation between him and Percy. Everyone at camp just kind of assumes that Luke was behind it all because he disappeared. Okay, now for the art style. I'm going to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of this art style. There's nothing particularly wrong with it, but I definitely prefer the more comic looking styles to this realistic one. Plus, do these kids look 12? They definitely do not look 12. So not a perfect adaptation, but pretty damn good for experiencing the entirety in its whole and how it was supposed to be experienced. So if you're not a big reader, I highly suggest this graphic novel. I give it an 8 out of 10. Did you read the Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief graphic novel? Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments below. But for right now, that's all I have for you, Half Blood. So I'm signing off. And until next week, always remember to stay safe. Thank you.